America first. America first. The leaders of both parties agree we must reduce globalization. That means using products, parts, materials built right here in the United States of America. Why? Because apparently we're getting ripped off. China is ripping us on trade. Selling us stuff is hardly ripping us off. Scott Lincecum runs the new Cato Institute project. Defending globalization. Defending is needed because so much of what we hear about trade and globalization is just wrong. In this video, we'll bust six myths. First, that idea that America is losing on trade. We're losing on trade uh, bigger than ever. People often say that because of our trade deficit. Our trade deficit with China is an immorality. Unacceptable. Why is it unacceptable? It's a one-way competition and China's winning. But we're winning too. Trade doesn't need to balance. I have a trade deficit with my supermarket. That doesn't mean it's beating me at trade. They get your dollars, yes, but you get food without having to grow it yourself. That win-win experience is true for everything we buy, regardless whether we buy it down the block or from Korea or Mexico. Imports are great. It means I can focus on what I want to do for a living and not go make my own food or make my own clothes. I can buy that from somebody else. And then I can use those savings and go buy other things. That makes me better off and makes us all better off in the long run. Every trade is a win for both parties because, as long as it's voluntary, you don't do it unless both sides think they win. Exactly. It's why when you pay, both you and the cashier often say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's win-win. But wait, I'm told buying from other countries hurts American workers. Too many good-paying manufacturing jobs move overseas. Thousands and thousands of miles away. That's myth too. Some people lose jobs. Undeniably true. We lose about 5 million jobs every month. But trade isn't the main reason for the job loss. Jobs are lost due to technology. They're lost due to changing consumer tastes. They're lost from innovation. We make a lot more stuff with a lot fewer workers. That's productivity and that's a good thing. This constant change creates jobs faster than it kills them. And trade creates even more. Companies engaged in international trade create 60% of America's new jobs. That's why the number of Americans who have jobs has been rising. And unemployment is low. We're at historically high manufacturing job openings. Manufacturers in the United States can't find enough workers. And what the jobs pay is up too. Yet politicians keep saying, we don't make anything anymore. That's just wrong. Manufacturing output in the U.S. is actually near its all-time high. We make more than Japan, Germany, India, and South Korea combined. There are many reasons why the media get this wrong. One is that a factory closing is visible. It's easy to photograph, easy to interview victims. After I lost my job, everything went downhill from there. But the job creation happens in thousands of different places. It's very difficult to write a story about broad-based economic growth. Myth four, trade and open markets create a race to the bottom. Wide open markets can have a devastating effect on countries where the economy is less developed. We're told globalization promotes child labor. Wearing no shoes and in the most wretched conditions. The last few decades of globalization allowed corporations to scour the planet for the cheapest labor and loosest regulations. This race to the bottom uh, is a myth. But wait a sec, the company can go all around the world and look for cheap workers. But give them jobs. That's the key point. These people in Bangladesh making t-shirts are paid less than Americans, but they have better lives than what they had before that company and that factory arrived. Making t-shirts in a sweatshop must have been better than their other alternative or they wouldn't have taken that job. Exactly. We Americans are spoiled. Uh, we look upon the jobs in the developing world, these factory jobs, and we say, oh, how terrible this is that these people are working for such low wages. But the reality is that their alternatives in these places are far, far worse. It's subsistence farming. It's sex work. It's getting married off to a guy down the street. Trade is what lets people in poor countries become prosperous. 
And when there's trade, there's less child labor. No parent wants his kid to go into the factory or the farm. They do it because they have no choice. As we get wealthier, child labor disappears. Even developing countries now are getting so rich that low-skill manufacturing work is looked down upon by their workers. Factory owners in Vietnam complain that uh, the kids these days want to be baristas and YouTubers and not go work in the textile factory. Now, that's not great for that factory owner, but it's great for those workers. So great that factories in Vietnam to keep workers now offer employees yoga and dance classes and in-house cafes. And it shows how globalization helps them get richer. But what about myth five? Globalization causes... Environmental degradation. The increased transportation of goods causes greenhouse gas emissions and other pollutants. And trees get cut down rating these resources almost as though they were limitless. It's undeniably true that as a nation starts along its development path, that it's going to pollute more. But a wonderful thing happens. As countries get wealthy, they become better environmentally. It's why pollution's dropping in America. Here the blue line is gross domestic product, the red is carbon emissions. The same's true for dozens of booming capitalist countries. Because only when people get wealthy enough to think beyond their next meal can they afford to care about the environment. The best thing that we can do for the developing world is to help those countries get rich, and globalization is part of that recipe. Finally, myth six, globalization is now over. The U.S. tariffs have kicked in. China can't put as many tariffs on us as we can put on them. The wheels are slowly coming off the globalization train. But so far, that's not true either. But if you look at the data, the fact is that trade levels in the United States and around the world are at or near all-time highs. That's just goods. When you look at things like digital trade, uh, the ability to stream Squid Game on Netflix, all of that is increasing at exponential rates. Trade brings us more stuff at lower prices and gives us more choices. Choices made by us, not by politicians. Reality is that Trade and globalization at its most fundamental level are just about people doing business with other people. And the more people we trade with, the better off we are. Globalization is win-win. Trades win-win. For example, keep watching our videos and we'll keep making them. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.